Yo. I'm just trying to make pimping my stuff a little bit more fun. So I have a YouTube channel, which is where you're probably watching this. Now to post a Mortem video, I have a second channel called Grimstream. It's not got the proper name yet, but if you search for it, you should find it. And if you're trying to stop sucking at the teat of YouTube, you can always head on over to BitChute and find me at Grim Jim. Hello lovelies, today we're looking at 6x6x6, the Mayhemic Missile Method for Lamentations of the Flame Princess, though it's compatible with basically anything that has Magic Missile as a spell, or even a, a similar spell, maybe maybe even Take That You Fiend from Tunnels and Trolls. And it's an oddity, in that it is a heavily <laughs> overproduced, um, lovely object of a book, all about one single spell magic missile which most people graduate from to fireball pretty quickly um, but it's a lot of fun and it's uh, got a great deal of transferability and it's full of inspiration for magic in your games I, I would personally say so let's have a look now it's a nice sort of um, fabric cover we have one of these little Bible strings in there, which is always nice. It's a full color interior. There's not a great deal to it, so it's it's all variations on Magic Missile, and that is about it. We have different methods for presenting Magic Missile. We have the possibility for you to learn these different variations as different spells. So you could have magic missiles that work in different ways, like only attack a single target but maybe do a bit more damage, or attack more targets but do less damage, or have more variable damage, and, and so on. So there's various ways that you can interpret magic missile there. Excuse me, a bit sniffly this morning. And I'm sorry if there's a whir, but it's cold, so the heat is on. But the real... There's a possibility of magical feedback and so on, but the, the real important meat of the book is D666 so you know hundreds tens units to describe all of the different spells and these are all variations on magic missile and it's basically just color for magic missile some of them have the, some slight additional rules and things um, but that's that's really it. Now it doesn't sound like much. It doesn't sound like it's a particularly uh, good or useful book. But Magic Missile is a very workmanlike spell for a great many levels, and so having variations, particularly for villains and monsters to use if they're spellcasters, is is all very nice. Um, so I will just quickly flip through and now I think the best way to review this is really to roll a few times and read you those descriptions to give you some sort of hint of what's in here um, I mean the art's very nice as it, as it usually is we have a parchment like background font doesn't necessarily fit that background but it's nice and readable and given this is primarily a reference book you know there's nothing wrong with that some of the entries might be a bit too gonzo and weird for you or they might not all be gonzo and weird enough but there is a, a wide and huge variety so you can pick and choose really as much as you want to I mean, spells in D&D, they often just become part of the background and the variety and potentially the unpredictability of the spell here uh, is certainly something a bit different and potentially very gory. Alright, let's try a few, shall we? Three, four, one. So, they're listed numerically and by roll. So, we want three, four, one. 
homuncular are the election. A dwarfish homunculus of the caster, just over a foot tall, and clad in a replica of her clothing, or his clothing, uh, steps suddenly from behind her, as if it waited concealed. The homunculus has a noticeable craniofacial deformity, cleft lip, uh, encephalocell, um, holoprosnocellopathy, or the like. If the caster already has one, then the homunculus has a different one. In a child's voice, it speaks a phrase that suggests the name of some spell, but without actually naming the spell known by the characters or the players. Roll 2d12 and use the resulting terms uh, to generate the name of the spell. X of Y or X of Y and the nature of its effect. Blade Gate of Blood Frost, which sounds, um, yeah, interesting. Uh, the homunculus then explodes, <laughs> doing damage along with the toy versions of the caster's belongings that it was carrying. Okay. So then you can kind of riff off that, and maybe even that generates you a new spell. It's two, six, five. From the Imperial Table of Drops. Around each target appear one or more nooses, each trailing a few feet of rope. These trailing ropes then go taut as if the target had fallen in a long drop hanging, planned according to the tables of an execution handbook. If the rolled damage exceeds the target's hit points, i.e. generating more than 1,800 newton meters of force, dismemberment may occur. So, randomly hangs people. Lovely. Five... Three, six. Shrieking Skull. Ah, this is this is based on real legends. Certainly here in in Britain, I don't know if they have Screaming Skull legends in other places. Composed of what looks like green flame, the skull resembles that of a human infant whose teeth had just begun to erupt. It shrieks passing through all material obstacles, ringing a chill not unlike that of a son's grave dug in winter. Scavengers avoid anything killed by the skull. So that gives you some kind of ideas. These are all variations on, on Magic Missile uh, in one big reference book table. And there's not a lot more to be said about it. Um, it would be interesting to see something like this based upon unusual uses and interpretations of other basic levels spells and, and cantrips um, I mean Magic Missile is ubiquitous so it makes sense to have an entire book for Magic Missile but it would be interesting to see something more expanded perhaps Ezra Clavery can, can do some more on, on that perhaps that would be interesting to see um, style Brilliant cover. The illustrations that there are in the interior are good, um, but there should be more of them, I think, especially given the the exotic effect of some of these spells. I almost, instead of the big color plates, I would almost rather have seen small, uh, sketchier sort of diagrammatic or anatomical drawings of a lot of these effects. I think that might have been a better approach. But yeah, yeah, each to their own. Even so, lovely cover, nice little page marker, good art. 4 out of 5 for style. In terms of substance, I mean, there is a lot here. There's about 65 pages of content in here. Again, that feels a little bit small for a hardback book and so on, but that is a, a design choice uh, that Raji makes, and I, I can respect that. It's just, this is my subjective opinion, obviously. Um, I mean, it's just one spell, but at the same time, it's an exhaustive examination of just one spell and a lot of alternatives and inspiration for that spell and for magic in general. So, <sighs> substance three, but it's a high three. 
if you're going to find this kind of thing useful, you're going to find it very useful. If you're not, <laughs> you're not. Um, it, it, it's hard to gauge. So uh, a high three, almost a full four for substance, but I'm going to go with the three. So that's seven out of ten, three and a half out of five. An interesting curiosity, a lovely physical object, full of inspiration, and that is, I think, its main useful role is being inspiration for your games and your magic in your games. Zang. Colony Moon is a cooperative or competitive story game about founding a moon colony, making it succeed and opening up the rest of the solar system for exploration. Players take on the parts of the board and make decisions about the future of the colony, expending political capital and gaining prestige when their plans work. Available at post-mort.com, lulu.com for print and drive-through RPG.